Good morning and welcome to Study IQ. I am Prashant Mavani. I hope you all are doing good, my dear friends. Uh, today is 16th October. And as you can see on your screen, we have many important articles to go through. So let's uh, quickly start our discussion on this one, the Bhutan vote. Now, if you go through this editorial, the first half, uh, roughly speaking, is talking about uh, political parties in Bhutan, which political party is standing where, how strong it is and things like that. Now, all this items are not important for us the most important thing for us is that this thursday we are going to see a general election result coming out for bhutan and the most important thing for us is india and bhutan's bilateral relationship and this extraordinary relationship that we share with this country this neighboring country of ours that is Bhutan. Now you have a king in Bhutan as well and uh, this king is uh, quite influential or you can say he retains a considerable influence over nation's foreign policy and uh, the king has always right uh, Mr. Rangchuk has always supported or he has always made you know he has always emphasized on this thing that uh, relationship with India should be our top priority it should be when it comes to foreign policy of course india is one of the most most important country for bhutan now uh, this year we are also going to celebrate uh, what 50 years of uh, bilateral relationship uh, between uh, these two countries right and uh, the most important thing is that uh, from last 50 years we have this extraordinary treaty a friendship treaty and this uh, friendship treaty was renewed back in 2007 uh, earlier on, it was uh, speaking more indirectly about defense relationship between India and Bhutan. So, of course, we know that Bhutan is a very tiny country in terms of resources, in terms of manpower. Of course, it is It is not a country that can you know, defend itself, particularly when you have a big dr dragon dancing on your, on your top. So, I'm talking about China, of course. So, you know, this Doklam issue that took place, uh, it was basically an issue between China and Bhutan. Uh, but India, you know, because of this uh, 2007 uh, refreshed Indo-Bhutan uh, friendship treaty or India-Bhutan friendship treaty, uh, it was, you know, in this treaty, we, it has been a bit clarified that when it comes to defense, India will stand uh, or both the nations will stand with each other just in case if anything goes wrong with any of any one of us, right, uh, we will stand with, we will stick with each other. So when uh, Bhutan was going through this stress uh, that was created by China, India fulfilled its duty and uh, with this we have expressed this thing, we have demonstrated that it's not just about, it's not just about a theory in, in terms of uh, practicality as well. India is ready to follow this 2007's friendship treaty. Now um, we have helped them to you know make money out of uh, this uh, hydropower projects. Uh, there are a few issues, right, when it comes to India. Uh, it's it's a time, you know, not completing projects on time and then these projects are becoming a bit expensive. So that's a thing that is a bit negative in terms of India and Bhutan's relationship or that can work or can create a little bit of problem. The other one, other thing is uh, back in 2013, uh, this uh, DPT party lost elections because uh, India all of a sudden, you know, pulled this uh, fuel subsidies that we used to provide to Bhutan at that point of time. So now this DPT is calling for sovereignty and self-sufficiency. Of course, you find a little bit of, uh, you know, resistance or a little bit of friction is fine, but uh, we don't want to see a scenario where in future, uh, or we don't want to see, of course, a party that we, that is uh, anti-India and pro-China or because of uh, this uh, mistakes that are conducted from our side, we don't want to see a party winning in a country like Bhutan, uh, which will make, which will, you know, uh, develop a more cordial relationship with China and less, or drifting apart from us, we don't want that thing. But of course, it's not going to happen now, uh, no matter which party comes in. But uh, we don't want this scenario, not in medium term, not in long term. And one more thing that I would like to add here, which is, of course, uh, there are so many things that we have discussed uh, here that are not mentioned in, you know, this editorial. But I would like to add here that uh, even today, China and Bhutan, they don't have formal uh, diplomatic relationship with each other. Uh, having said that, that's everything that we find in this uh, Bhutan vote. Now, before moving ahead, I would like to inform 
all of you that if you are preparing for UPPSC, uh, right, Uttar Pradesh Public Service Commission exam uh, that is going to take place on 28th October this year, then from today we have launched our test series. You will get 10 tests in next 10 days and this will help you a lot uh, with your 28th October prelims examination if you are not preparing for this exam then if someone else is preparing then please make sure that you take out a couple of minutes and inform that person about this thing it will help them immensely right uh, so do let them know and if they have any question queries regarding it then do ask them to check out studyaq.com or do pass our numbers as you know uh, and they will find all these important details on our website you can download the pdf of today's lecture from my page and twitter handle the second item that we have is something that we have already discussed earlier on it's about not just liquidity now this one is about infrastructure lease and financial services il and i il and fs now it's in a state of default default basically means that you are out of money right to put it in a simple way it is being basically in red uh, red means uh, again it's a bit of difficult terminology so a uh, default basically means now you are, you don't have that much money uh, to pay your debt and you don't have that much money that will uh, that will help you with your smooth day-to-day -day operations so the situation of uh, this ilnfs ilfs is uh, because of uh, you know huge amount of uh, loans or most of the loans uh, are are given for you know big projects uh, and long-term loans are given by this ilfs now what happens is just imagine if you have 100 rupees right you are ilfs and you have 100 rupees you are ready to give this 100 rupees and if you are giving this whole 100 rupees uh, to maybe two right to x and y you are giving 50 rupees to x and 50 rupees to y for 50 years right uh, so and the terms and conditions are that uh, after 10 years you will start getting the first installment of this 50 rupee loan uh, from x and 50 from y so maybe one pesa two pesa or three pesa depends so now you know that for 10 years you are not going to get anything so if you make this sort of mistake then you are going to be in this state of being in default isn't it now this is not a scenario just going on with ilfs we find this thing going on with the non-banking financial companies right the whole sector is suffering from uh, various different weaknesses on top uh, they are surrounded by this rise in international and domestic interest rates so when interest rates are going up uh, it becomes uh, or you find a negative sentiment in the market people or businesses you know they will not be inclined to get a new loan so your new clients are not coming in uh, your loans uh, that you the loans that you have taken will become a bit expensive uh, so less profit less customers are popping down so eventually you know your business will be in a slow state and this will create a negative sentiment uh, in the minds of all those investors and they will they can pull their money or they will not invest in your business so eventually your share value and everything will gradually start falling down so that's the thing now reserve bank of india national housing bank and state of bank of india uh, together these three banks they have decided that uh, they need to do something about uh, this rising or interest rate uh, to keep it under control they are going to supply you know this uh, bank or this uh, non-banking financial companies with a little bit of liquidity that means uh, pumping some money in so that's fine because at the end of the day you have to pay back that money but state bailouts right if government is thinking about stale bail as a state bailout bailout means uh, if uh, say for example IL and FS uh, if uh, it is not able to pay this 10 rupee that it has to pay to a person called A or a or an organization called A uh, then the government uh, will come in and government will pay this uh, 10 rupee from its pocket to A so this uh, N ILFS can have a fresh start now it looks all right to save a big ship you know if, if you if a big ship is uh, losing its balance then it is all right to to provide a little bit of support but the thing is what will happen is then that if you are giving it uh, for free 
right then gradually other it will trigger a moral hazard and there will be other companies they will be seeking this bailout so we should be very careful when we apply this bailout now we are going to talk about this article written by Rakesh uh, Sood and this one is called decoding the Rafale controversy this article is talking about three questions or so it's saying that if these three questions are addressed by the government of India then this whole snowballing of controversy will get neutralized and he is right as well now we'll go through it I have got a timeline for you guys here as far as this Rafal deal is concerned so back in 2000 it was uh, we realized that we need to acquire some 126 aircrafts to replace a part of aging fleet to replace this old or getting you know this uh, this old or elderly aircrafts if I can put it this way or when I say aircrafts or aeroplanes or planes here in this uh, discussion I'm talking about uh, fighter jets of course so it was decided it was rea we realized this thing it was identified uh, back in 2000 then uh, in 2007 uh, government of India released this global tender uh, so that we were looking for you know it was a sort of offer uh, that we were seeking so uh, various different countries and companies they can propose what they have so finally, somewhere around 2010, it was uh, we were having two options. One was uh, Eurofighter uh, that is known as Typhoon, and the second one is uh, this Rafale. So both this uh, are, of course, uh, you know, Typhoon is bit better than, if I'm not wrong, bit better than uh, this Rafale. Uh, but when I say better, I'm talking about its agility, its uh, speed, and other things. But overall, for our country. If we, if we see from cost uh, point of view, if we see it from maintenance point of view, if we see it from uh, requirement of India point of view, and uh, so many other things, right, technical things, uh, if, we, if all these things were calculated and it was finally back in 2011 that was it was decided that Rafale is the best option available for us. In 2012, negotiations uh, commenced with Dassault. Now, Dassault is a French company. So government of India started negotiating with, remember, government of India started negotiating with Dassault. Now, at present, if we look at the scenario of current Air Force situation, then uh, authorized squadron is 42. At present, we are having just a 32 squadron. So a squadron basically means, uh, you know, it means we 18, a group of 18, a team of 18 aircrafts, right, will make one squadron. So... I'm not being too technical here if you are from air force background then uh, you will of course be able to add more points but for general studies this is more than enough even though just for your satisfaction let me tell you that uh, uh, let me add this thing that uh, it's not just about 18 planes right it's not just about 18 fighter jets it's more than that when we say squadron we are also talking about this ground support staff and maintenance and so many things right for this one particular squadron so it's not just planes it's also those things that are working on the back door so at present we are in short of what 10 squadrons so if you roughly divide this 40 right uh, 42 and we are at 32 so we are talking about a shortage or vacuum of some 25 percent capacity of our air force isn't it and 25 percent capacity is not a small thing it's a serious thing now former union defense minister it is said that he was a bit indecisive uh, ak anthony to be precise and uh, back in 20 then later on we saw that uh, modi government came in and uh, mr modi was in france back in 2015 april and all of the sudden mr modi said that uh, government of india is uh, is scrapping uh, this 126 aircraft deal or this discussion or negotiations uh, with the daso and rather than that government will go ahead with uh, would like to go ahead with 36 rafale uh, aircraft and this one again it was rafale but this one was uh, this one was uh, you know in, in this 126 uh, some planes are supposed to be to be built here and rest of us means a big chunk will be built here and by hal and uh, a couple of planes will come in like 10 or 15 or something will come in ready to fly condition but that's not important the most important thing here is it was decided all of the sudden so we said that uh, mr modi said that 36 rafale aircraft will be purchased 
in government to from government to government deal uh, ready to fly condition and things like that now at the same time defense minister said that he was unaware about this decision now this is the first point right how decision was taken on this whole rafal deal and this is one of the reason why we find that cji ranjan gogoi headed bench has sought details a couple of days ago it was news item remember that uh, decision making process should be filed in a sealed envelope to the supreme court because it it is a bit curious as well and it's it's uh, of course uh, quite a curious thing because the when it comes to defense right uh, defense acquisition council will decide and it is headed by defense minister uh, but before that you also have this cabinet committee on security where you have dm you have pm you have fm finance minister you have uh, minister of external affairs so all this important home minister so they will you know decide as cabinet committee on security so defense minister is part of this thing but if he is or if at that point of time uh, then defense minister said that he was unaware so that is a big thing how decision was taken so this should be clarified by the government the second thing is about price now as i told you you know price it all depends uh, there are so many things uh, associated with it uh, we are not being too technical here and it's not uh, required as well as far as general studies is concerned so in essence right uh, price during upn negotiation was different during india negotiation is different uh, if you ask me i would say it's a bit logical right that the price has gone up a little bit because it's not about just time but upa was uh, just looking for planes or this fighter jets and nda this current modi government is also you know adding some sort of uh, spices on the top that means we need this bomb and that gun and things like that that will be fitted with this aircraft so this extra toppings uh, that we are adding on this aircraft and with no offense of course right i'm just uh, adding a little bit of fun here so right so rafal current price is 1025 crore per aircraft right uh, so why the price is 1025 crore this is something that they have to explain now uh, Ex-President uh, Franco Hollande has said that we don't have any sort of deal uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, keeping secrecy in, on, in terms of prices. So uh, there are some, you know, contradictory statements. Now, India is saying that we have to keep it secret. Uh, Francis is saying that we don't have any secrecy and things like that. So what it is all about, this is a second question. And the third question relates to this offset share now if you know what offset is all about i have explained this thing so i'm not going into the detail of this offset basically if you read this thing right the agreement of for agreement for 36 aircraft was signed by the two defense ministers on september 23rd 2016 dral that is uh, this daso reliance aerospace limited was registered on 3rd october while fdi in defense had been liberal uh, liberalized to permit 49 percent through the automatic route in june of the same year so it's a coincidence or is something going on here so this is the third thing that government has to explain why you know this uh, decisions about aircraft and this uh, setting up of this uh, this dral and other things uh, took place uh, you know in, in nearly same months or you can say in same time period now the thing is this whole controversy has damaged our national security because the biggest casualty is of course na national security as you can see it's been what uh, nearly 18 years uh, since we realized we identified that we are in short of 126 aircrafts by th 2032 uh, strength of squadrons will drop to 23 it's 32 now it should be 42 will be in 23 so if you calculate with 42 then we will be short of what 50 percent of our capacity which is very dangerous the second casualty is make in india because of this controversy other businesses other things will not come to india so we need to stop this thing we need to get rid of this thing and government should explain all these three questions as soon as possible and sort out this matter for good the other one is about castles in the air right uh, castles in the air not castle castles in the air castle is the right uh, pronunciation now this castles in the air is about uh, mr romer mr paul romer 
who won this uh, Nobel Prize for Economics uh, in 2018. And uh, he talks about or he has heavily promoted this charter cities. Now, what these charter cities are all about? They are like startup cities. So uh, in a country, you know, you uh, choose a piece of land and from there you will start a city. You will start constructing a city from the scratch. And it's not just about physical infrastructure. It's not just about roads and your digital connectivity, but it is more than that. And when I say more than that, I'm talking about this political setup as well so everything is new here that's what charter cities uh, are all about or this startup city is all about so everything when, I, when we say everything is new here your political setup is new and and the thing is when you are going ahead when you are planning for a charter city basically a developing nation uh, you know uh, a, a country will come in a developed country uh, mostly will propose, uh, you know, this much and that, uh, this much is required, you need to give us this, 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 etc., this much piece of, all these things will be provided and uh, this developed nation or a company may, say for example, a private company will, or a private company with, in partnership with a developed nation, together they can develop uh, this uh, new city in our country, for example, and rules and regulations, everything will be crafted by this new a country or this uh, this country that is uh, setting up this new city in our country so there are chances chances that apart from defense uh, policing courts so many things so many things uh, will be will be new here and it's not that uh, when i say new i would it's not that it will be in line with what we have it will be totally independent so this is something that has been immensely criticized. This is an idea that is promoted by Mr. Roma, but this is immensely criticized. What they are saying is that if you, if you just allow us new construction, if you don't allow us political freedom, then how we are going to run this uh, new city? Uh, but the thing is, uh, if you are talking about, if you, if you think that uh, by just asking you know, for this sort of political freedom, what about colonialism, right? What will happen if after a couple of years your your country or this new developed nation that is investing in this particular city is uh, started, you know, this sort of campaign and other sort of things uh, that will create a sort of hatred in, in city or in that particular state or in that region. What about that? What about anti-national activities and things like that, uh, just in case if, if we find. So it's a risk no country will take, right? Uh, Honduras, you have uh, Madagascar. It was proposed, this sort of uh, charter cities in in these countries and other countries but uh, it was uh, it was uh, opposed by people and uh, these projects are cancelled too so that's the thing uh, this this is the reason why the name you find that castles in the air that means uh, building castles in the air so it's a baseless thing that's what it is trying to say uh, moving on to another item but before that i would like to take you through this one falling short on most counts uh, this one is about ayushman bharat or Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana. Uh, now I'm sure you remember we have talked about PMJAI many a times in detail. I have to, uh, told you many a times that uh, this is a very important topic. But the, th the, the thing is I'm not going to cover this article today because uh, if you go through it you will find that most of the items we have already talked about. Uh, this article is having a little bit of negative view with which I don't agree to be honest. And the reason why I don't agree it's not emotional it's pure logical. And this is something that you have to understand here that to uh, see GST when GST was launched at that point of time uh, you know it was uh, it was in the air that uh, it is going to be a perfect system but nothing is perfect in real life you do implement or do you launch something and then you find some sort of challenges and failures and then now it depends are you really working for it if you are yes if you are working for sorting that challenge out and if you are you know taking it to a new level then that's the thing that's that's the thing that is required so we have observed this thing with gst at various different periods we have find you know this uh, problems being faced by gst and i believe something similar will happen with uh, pmjai uh, pmjay as well it's going to find uh, so many hurdles but if we are saying that this is a big failure then no that's not a big failure failure would be if we are not acting if government is 
government of india is not acting on pmja why if if government of india finds a couple of failures and if it's not acting on this thing then i would say that is a failure so we have to wait for time being let us find some issues and then we can work on this thing this one is about talking again me too so we have talked about it already so not going through it now this one is about hamstringing the rti act so a couple of uh, days ago remember a couple of weeks ago it was a news item that uh, our government of india is trying to introduce some necessary or some changes I, I won't say necessary but some changes with this central information commission and uh, commissioners uh, who are working in this uh, central information commission now rti is a very important act i still remember the words of apj kalam in his book one of his book i think it was wings of fire he said that uh, it was a very it was one of the most important day uh, for him and he was uh, early in this office of president and he was there some seven o'clock or eight o'clock in the morning or something like that and he was eagerly waiting for this rti bill to come in so that he can sign and make it or give it a, a you know shape or manifest it into a practical thing now if you ask me my analysis on this rti is that uh, knowledge is power you know we have heard about this thing and when we say knowledge is power the main thing is that if you know say say for example if if there is something right uh, that you are not aware about once you are aware about that thing right if you if you know that today is at present as we are talking now right it's a day right this is something that you will not argue or you will not accept any sort of argument on, on this thing right if you are in india and if someone is telling you that at present as we are talking now it is it is night time then you will not listen to it because you know the truth right you know the reality once you know reality whether you are with it or we, whether you are with whether you are not with it right one thing is there you cannot change it you know it and that's a thing that uh, that will make you you know once you know that something is wrong and something that is taking or happening in my city or in with me or with anyone else if that is wrong if you know this thing that means you know what is truth right what is right and what is wrong and once you know this thing you cannot accept what is wrong so this is this is something uh, that uh, it gives us it gives us this confidence once we once we are aware about the right thing or or truth and then it gives us this power and confidence so that's what rti has done with our society that's what i believe and it, it's true as well commonwealth 2g there are so many big scams you know they 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 came out because of this RTI. Now, what government of India is trying to do is, uh, government of India is saying that uh, the job of election commissioners and information commissioners is totally is very different. They cannot be on same page. Uh, their powers uh, should be different. Uh, transparency is less important for a democracy. A democracy in, in terms of democracy, then that's not right. Both right. Without transparency, there is no democracy, isn't it? Uh, so. Government of India is trying to change this tenure of five years of this uh, information commissioners to to a, to a term that will be de uh, decided by government of India. So this is not fair. Uh, Justice uh, Sri Krishna committee has proposed that uh, to broaden the definition of harm and it has restricted uh, this disclosure of personal information even where it may be clearly linked to some public activity. So this uh, committee's uh, negative point is this one and uh, government of india as a stand is also not right then we have so many va vacancies as well uh, then government is also not being that much active or implementative when it comes to co motu it has been part of this section 4 of rti act that uh, that asks or that is that makes it mandatory for government uh, to to co motu release inform information rather than we asking for it the government should release this information so on many fronts uh, there are many challenges and government needs to address these challenges rather than uh, uh, you know making or diluting this uh, position of information commission or information commissioners very quickly let's go through news items saudi arabia promises to meet uh, india's oil needs Akbar slaps a defamation case on journalists. You have to go through these articles, right, uh, from the newspapers. I'm just giving you, highlighting the most important articles here. News items, of course. Pollution forecast uh, system unveiled. Uh, so we'll be able to, you know, forecast uh, uh, pollution uh, two, three days in advance. Uh, Twelve courts uh, set up to try MPs and MLAs. Supreme Court is not happy with the states and UTs and high courts as well. And it has ordered that before September 12, you need to sort this thing out. India and France 
are uh, having a chat regarding tri service exercise ahead of climate talk uh, india in touch with 40 countries so that we can have this unity so that we can be, uh, we can properly negotiate this finance and technology from developed nations vikrama singe to meet mr modi he's going to be here in our nation from 19th and uh, in this 19th and 20th october he will be here in our country in financial news from financial paper uh, Prime Minister Modi asks oil producers to review terms and payments. Uh, very important lines here. Mr. Modi has said that you are the ones who are, you know, deciding the price and other things. Uh, so oil market, oil market is producer driven, and both the quantity and prices are determined by oil producing countries. So Mr. Modi has urged them that uh, do review your price and payment terms and make sure that the prices are controlled and also he has urged that uh, do accept a part payment in rupees so this will be a less burden on country like india we are a big market so i'm sure they are going to listen to what we are trying to project or what we are trying to explain export f exports fall 2.15 percent in september trade gap a month a five month Law and disaster cess uh, is something that uh, discussion is taking place on this thing because uh, this recently, you know, we saw this uh, Kerala floodings and at that point of time it was realized that National Disaster Relief Fund is not sufficient. We need some more funds. Uh, these are your five new words uh, that you need to find answers or meanings and then you have to post it in the comment section. Uh, yesterday I asked you this map-based question and I'm so glad that many of you have responded it uh, took a active part in this thing so i'm sure you will benefit uh, the more you you know make it a, a regular habit and i will uh, keep uh, throwing this sort of things in front of you that will that will challenge you and uh, you know you have to google and do a little bit of research at present it may look uh, time consuming but trust me a day will come once you will develop this habit of doing research a day will come where you will not have any words uh, to to thank me uh, for this good habit so on your screen you can see a picture uh, give me the name of this gentleman also give me the country the name of uh, his country and uh, also give me some information regarding geography of that particular country now let me add one more thing right as we move ahead we are going to learn things step by step so when you write your answer and when you're reading answers provided by someone else don't take it as correct answer you need to do peer review peer review means if you're if you really want to benefit uh, out of this thing once you have posted your answer at the end of the day you can take out some time set up alarm in your in your in your mobile phone or if you are using smartphone then you have this google calendar set up a, a sort of a calendar or schedule for every day right you can set up uh, set up this thing in in one go so at evening seven or nine maybe right uh, one thing that i'm going to do for 15 minutes is i'm going to go through the comment section i am going to see my answer i'm going to see answers of other other colleagues and then i will do a peer review i will open my atlas and i will go through these answers that are provided by other people so if someone is saying that uh, saudi arabia is sharing its border with 10 countries then that is right or wrong whether it is nine or eight which are these countries he has he or she has posted this many names uh, all the names are correct so this is what peer review is all about so make sure you do peer review and this is the top quality thing that you would be doing right when it comes to this exercise this exercise and trust me it will help you s immensely if everyone just imagine if everyone is taking when i say everyone i know it's going to be always two percent hard-working people so if whole two percent is actively taking part in it then at the end of the day you'll be having so good quality thing in your hand right so make sure you take active part in it and uh, yesterday i talked about a book so this is the book here if just in case if you are interested and these are your answers, uh, two new questions, that's everything, enjoy your studies, God bless you all, Jai Hind.